Jesse, what's up, man? How you doing? Josh, I'm good, man. How are you? I'm, I'm good. As, I'm glad to see you, man. It's been a little, little, little time since yeah. I've seen you in person. Uh, how you been? I'm good, man. I'm good. Just getting done working for the day. Uh, you're actually catching me in my truck. So, uh, you know, <laughs> we've been on the road in uh, good old Hayes America today. So back in town, though, and, and ready to do this. Isn't it crazy that you're in Hayes, which we'll get to? That's the home of the artists that we have on today. The, the, the OG <laughs> stomping grounds, man. I'm going to get right. to that in a second, man. But before I do that, I always give you guys a piece of I call it useful information, useful facts. So um, it's very fitting to talk about the definition of a pillar. So you'll see why in a minute, but this is an actual definition of what pillar stands for. It's a tall vertical structure or stone, sometimes wood, or it could be a monument. Also, it could be a pillar of smoke. Um, it's also the name of one of the raddest rock bands in the past 25 years. Um, it's also the main definition. If you look it up, it says rock band and everything else is below that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> But no, Dane, it's it's actually one of my uh, joys, man. Someone, uh, I remember Jesse, we were talking about this. The first time, I'll never forget where I was standing when I heard Fireproof. It started with me with Fireproof. I'm like, what is this sick riff? Who is this dude that sings better than Fred Durst that's kind of doing that whole same thing, that kind of vibe, you know? I'm like, who is this? So I ran to the store. I bought, like, I went back then. It was uh, it was uh, Sam Goody. I went and got the album because you could listen to it on the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Get oh, that, yeah. And then it was just, it was, I was hooked from there, man. So I, I can't wait to bring rob himself on so i'm gonna get right to it and bring him on rob how you doing man i'm doing good brother how are you good good man awesome uh yeah dude when you i, I was telling jesse when you first dropped all the way back to fireproof even and there's like there's like three versions of it i'm like from that moment on and of course where we go from here obviously from confessions to the latest album with even one the revolution i've been hooked from day one man because you just you don't stop making great hits man so i love what you're doing so <laughs> That's awesome. Well, it is. It has been a journey. Uh, I will say this. It's funny that you got kind of opened up with the definition of pillar, because one of my favorite memories was like three o'clock in the morning. We were at a truck stop. There's just like when the bus would stop, you just got off to go in. You meander around three o'clock in the morning. And I just will never forget Noah and I. Uh, we were over by the drinks, and there's this trucker. He's walking by. He's like, y'all in a band? We're like, yeah, man, we're in a band. He's like, what's the name of y'all's band? I said, Pillar. <laughs> he goes, Pillar? Like what you lay your head on? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, I love that's it, a, man. That's a different definition of Pillar. The regional gonna, definition. Yeah, <laughs> man. I got to get some new pillars because my throw pillars are no good. I love it. I love that, Rob. That's fantastic. Well, Rob, Jesse and I have got some questions for you, man. I'm going to take the lead on this one. Um, obviously, before working with Pillar, <laughs> I can't get that out of my head now, before working and making so many great albums and, and inspiring us, man, honestly, and helping us get through tough times, before doing that with Pillar, I'm curious, when did you begin, man, writing, making music, even before that? How old were you when you got the itch to become an artist, you know? Man, it it was – it's an interesting journey to look back um, and to see everything that happened. It kind of, those seasons cultivate you for the next season of life. And I, for me, um, when we first started, uh, I had just got back from being gone for about a year in the army. Um, I, I started back up going to school, moved in with my brother-in-law. He was a drummer. Uh, he's like, Hey, some buddies are going to come over and we're going to jam. I was like, cool. I, I would love to love to hang out. And prior to that, I, I went to college thinking I was going to go play baseball. I got told that I wasn't a catcher. I wasn't big enough. Uh, and and my dreams were crushed. Right. So then I started um, playing. I got a scholarship to play saxophone um, in the jazz band and the pep band and all of that. So I started really getting into music, uh, met some guys from Chicago. We played in a little jazz band together called Nightshade. And and so I kind of had a, this like desire to play music. It was fun. I enjoyed it. And I also got like a, a little scholarship to sing in the choir. So I, I was singing a little bit. And it was really through college that like singing just became something that I did. It wasn't something that I like identified as or that I ever dreamed of playing rock and roll. In fact, I didn't like rock music, to be honest with you. When I was in college, it was like jazz and R&B was like I really got into that. And so for me, when I, I moved in with my brother-in-law and we started playing music, uh, these guys come over 
we start jamming like, Hey, we should write some songs. We should, we should be a Christian band. I didn't even know what that meant. Uh, they showed me like switch foot. I think it was the first CD that they gave me. I was like, well, this is pretty cool. And it was really odd, man. That season of life of like stepping into that, it was a little bit like I was living somebody else's dream because I never really, that was not something that I ever saw coming. And so our guitar player at the time, his name was Travis. Uh, yeah. I would say he was the catalyst of pushing it forward. Like, hey, we should do this. Hey, we should do that. He was the visionary. Like he was a very big dreamer. And I think without, you know, the way God kind of used him to like mm. orchestrate all of it. Um, I know he wasn't there throughout all of it, but he was a big part of pushing yeah. the ball forward and kind of fell in love with the whole like, hey, man, this song's cool. We wrote this. Uh, and then other people would play it and people liked it. It's like, that's weird. Uh, but that was that was where you, we kind of fell in love. We moved in together. We had a house together. We would be up all night, like brothers. writing songs together, and and that's where it evolved. Man, like brothers from start, man. That's cool, man. Yeah. So, yeah, I I would love to see. You know, I'm maybe on a B side. Are we gonna hear like a pillar saxophone like cut somewhere where it's like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Redo confessions with a little saxophone in it, man. That'd be legit, you know. So I haven't no. I haven't looked at a saxophone <laughs> in probably 40 years. I love that. That's awesome. And Jesse, go ahead with question two, man. <laughs> yeah. So Rob, um, you guys have played around for you know, the last 25 years or so. Um, some of you, you mentioned, you know, a favorite memory from a truck stop here, which is, which I'm never going to forget that. I'll tell you that much right <laughs> now. <laughs> uh, what's some of the favorite gigs you guys have played? Has it been, you know, local stuff from back when you guys first got going in college or, you know, some bigger stuff. Tell me more about that. So there were some fond memories for different reasons. I think, everything that you go through prepares you for the next thing. It's almost like parenthood, like every season of life kind of prepares you for the next season of life. And that, that was true in the evolution of our band. Like the, the more we did, the more opportunities would come. Um, and we were just grinders. And I, I think early on, I remember playing a concert one time, uh, actually like I'll give you a few examples early yeah. on, when we released what was later became our debut, like um, label album called above originally it was called original Superman. And. Oh, I know. <laughs> I'll never, I'll never forget that moment of we, we worked our butts off. We, we made this record. We got all the artwork done. We got all, all these t-shirts were like, all right, we got to do a CD release party. And we got this venue. And I think it was supposed to hold about 500 and we were, we got like uh, from the Chamber of Commerce, we of all these surrounding communities, we got a list of churches and we just sent out and self-promoted. And the day of that concert and there was a line like out the like uh, wrapped around the building, down the block, buses for like church buses from like 50 miles away were coming in. Wow. And uh, I'm pretty sure, like I can probably say it now, Statue of Limitations is gone, but uh, we <laughs> definitely we definitely broke the fire code. Uh, there was awesome. way more people in that building than were supposed to be. Uh, I think there, I think there was over a thousand people that ended up coming. Uh, we sold every CD we purchased from disc makers. We like printed our own discs. Like we sold everything that we had, and we're like, man, this is that was that was a very incredible moment. Uh, that was a fun show. Um, we had, uh, I think, favorite place. Uh, there was a really there's a big festival in New Zealand called parachute festival that we yeah. played at. That was just a, it was just an incredible experience. And then just getting to be in New Zealand, uh, we had a chance to go look at some of the Lord of the Rings sites. So that was pretty cool. Um, and then just a favorite m memory and moment was um, playing Sunday, bloody Sunday, our cover of U2 yeah. Sunday, bloody Sunday at Cornerstone. I remember being out on the catwalk. It went probably like a hundred feet out into the audience and I was standing out there and we hit this moment where we, we, we stopped. And so that the lyric to claim the victory, Jesus won would stand out. We hit like hit this break and it just started pouring rain. Oh, uh, like in that moment. And I just remember not singing. I just stopped singing. Like I like held my hands out, stood there in the rain and kind of had a moment of like, you forget that there's 20,000 people there. Uh, that was a pretty special moment. So those are some kind of highlight yeah. moments. That's, yeah, man, that's awesome. awesome. Yeah, Jesse, like you, I've 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 got to go to Cornerstone once, and Jesse, I know you're talking about wanting to go, and that that's a 
it's taken memory, dude. Like, um, and, and Jesse, I will tell you this. I can promise you every single song you have, even before we were able to do Spotify and all that, I have all those albums. I remember when you guys dropped that, you guys had Sanctus Real on that, and it was you guys and Tate yeah. did the version of, you know, of one and all these guys. Like, what a, what an amazing album. So that, I would have loved to see that live. That's awesome. I'm, I'm curious too, man, because I, I, I've watched a lot of interviews with you guys over the years. I remember one time, I'll never forget this, the influence you had on me. When we tried to do our band, I watched you do this interview one time and you were wearing a Godsmack shirt. It was cool. And you're like, hey, it's okay to be real music and also have a good positive message at the same time and believe in something, right? I was like, wait a minute. He's like, he's in the same breath as Godsmack at the time. Like you're talking about what you guys are doing. You're in the circuit. You're playing next to Cedar and Chevelle and you're standing for what you, you believe in while still making just great music, you know? So the influence yeah. you've had on bands like us and then far reaching, I'm curious to see, man, what's been a, a one or two artistic influences on you as a person, you know? I would say it kind of evolved over the course of doing um, the band. Like it, one, one of my favorite artists is Johnny Cash. Um, and I think just because it, he was so simple, there was, it was simple and effective. Like that's my mm -hmm. mantra of life. Like don't overcomplicate it. Um, I love Johnny cause he could, he could paint a picture, but he did it so simply. Uh, it was just eloquent, but simple, but also kind of had some depth to it. And you're like, this dude's, this dude's awesome. Um, I love Foo Fighters. Um, was probably fr as far as a band. Um, Seven Dust was a big influence, I think, on me uh, later in our career. And getting to play some shows alongside those guys, they're uh, arguably one of the greatest live performing bands yeah. I've ever ever seen. Um, but it, it kind of evolved. You know, each season brought a yeah. different influence. Understood. I got you. That makes sense. Yeah, I definitely see the broad range. And uh, and again, I just, I Jesse, before take four, I just, I've always went back to, I think it's so fascinating when I get to interview people like yourself and even recently I had Petity on. It's nice to interview top deck musicians and artists that don't have to like water down how you feel to make great music. And I've always thought that was so cool. There was a time, you probably can speak to this, Rob or Jesse, where it's like you had to almost separate everything. You couldn't be awesome and have a positive message. And there's even back in the day, right? It's okay. Here's your stack of catalog of CDs. You can listen to it. Sam Goody, my dad would tell me, but when people like you guys came along, it's like, we can do both. We can listen to great music and still have a message that stands out and is powerful. So I just, Jesse yeah. helped me out because I'll fanboy for days. Jesse, go ahead. And report, man. <laughs> no, so Rob, we're, uh, we're coming into the back half of 2023 now. And, uh, you know, with everything you've done with your music and what you've got going on with Battle Creek Church, uh, what's next for you? Uh, just in life and music, career. Uh, tell us what's next for the rest of the year. Yeah. Man, I, I, my my biggest calling right now is just to be the best husband and dad that I can be. I have six kids now. Um, so what happens when you come off the road. Um, <laughs> yeah. Got you. The, just the, the impact that they even my kids have on me. Um, they're incredible kids and, you know, every parent brags about their kids, but I love, um, their character and, and I love getting to be present right now for a lot of, my daughter just started today, uh, her freshman year. My son is going to, oldest son is going to be a junior and, uh, all of the kids now, uh, even my youngest daughter, she's six, she started wrestling as well. So all of them, uh, are very competitive in wrestling. They love it. Um, that's kind of our, like our ministry so to speak i guess you'd say yeah. that's where our our people are and that's where we we uh we spend a lot of time and so just getting to be present with them is is huge and and i'd say i as far as anything like pillar wise and the guys are constantly like we we have a text thread that we are constantly talking with each other and i'm probably the the one that holds us back the most everybody's like oh we should go do this or we should go do that um, and I'm sure someday there'll be something that comes up that, that they finally talk me into it. Uh, but as far as anything, you know, pillar wise, uh, the rest of this year, who knows, man, I, I, I don't yeah. have any, I have anything planned right now. Um, the, my biggest priority is just continuing to be present for my, for my family and, and I continue to do what I love to do here, um, with leading in the church. As Jesse, as you'd probably say, man, that's the best, that's the best job, right? Jesse being a great husband and dad. <laughs> hundred percent, man. hundred percent. That's, uh, that's kind of how I try to do things in my life right now. And, and yeah, I get it. I get it completely. 
Yeah. I mean, Jesse and I, we both talk about like the coaching things that we do, Rob, and, and music and it's all that's great. And even being like an awesome musician and an entertainer over there's like you have, but man, taking care of the families and the ministry that you're doing is probably number one. So I love that about you, man, that we, we'd rather wait, uh, for the time to be right to have a new album come out and then for you to rush it. That's also, I call you the Maynard of, of, of positive rock, by the way, man, because you yeah. kind of just do it at your, at your pace. And it's always yeah. great when you do it. Like we're sitting here yeah. in you know, 2015, like I'll be waiting to 2015. No pressure, man. But I, I need some more, I need some more Rob, man. But no, yeah. I, I'm, I'm messing with you, man. So there's a segment, I promise you, Rob, that you've never had an interview before. I almost feel willing to bet. Uh, well, this will be on DraftKings. I'm kidding. But there's a segment that you've never had before in an interview. Our fans give us some awesome questions. So they're PG always, but they do a little segment called Rapid Fire. And these are really yeah. weird questions. Now, they're meant to like make you think. A little bit of a Rorschach test about your personality. Imagine uh, for a moment, time doesn't exist, past or present, anything's possible, okay? So right. uh, Jesse and I bet on me. So Jesse, you got your picks, you ready? So I got it, man. So, okay, going first one, so you're called up, um, kind of having a revisiting of maybe like a Vans Warped Tour type thing, you guys are invited out. But the, before the show starts and everybody comes back, kind of a legacy edition, you're asked to go out on stage and do a barbecue steak off cooking contest against one of these two singers you have to barbecue on stage against one of these two guys are you going to barbecue against fred durst or nick from 311 on stage who are you cooking off against i'm going with nick from 311 because i feel like he's more of a vegan and fred durst is, <laughs> fred durst is a, yeah. uh, i'm just guessing i love it, I, don't know. <laughs> I, love it. I, I had that one did you have that jesse or did you have uh, did you have nick you know i had i had nick hexam but not for that you know just because he's from omaha you know and omaha steaks <laughs> I got you. <laughs> I love it. So, so next question again. Time doesn't exist, okay? So, or or space or gravity and all that. So, you guys are asked. Um, they call you up. They talk in and do a new album. So, you're gonna do your release in 2024, the new single. But the way they're gonna do it is, you get to be the first band ever to play a live song while on Mars. On Mars, you're there. And somehow this happens. You're gonna do a cover to open up the show, the concert of one of these two legendary songs while you're on Mars. Are you going with? Rocket Man, classic, or are you going with Black Hole Sun as your opener while you're on Mars? Which one are you going with? Black Hole Sun. Let's go, I'm two for two, man. I knew it from your, from your musical background. I knew it, man, I love it. So, did uh, you, man, Jesse, did you I have Rocket Man? I had Rocket Man. Go. I'm, going, I'm going Chris Cornell. Got you, I love it, I love it. So, on that time frame, man, of kind of being a legend, uh, frontmen are, they make a big impact on the band. We know that, right? So, mm -hmm. you get you get asked to go back into 1994. Um, both of these bands are playing, they're headlining, and you get to cover for one night because both artists are sick, they're not feeling well. You got to pick, hey, we want you to cover for us. You got two bands. You can go with A, cover for Nirvana, classic. I know the Dave Grohl thing. Or stay with me. You can fill in for Lane and cover for uh, Alice in Chains for the night. Which one are you going with? I'm gonna have to go with Nirvana just so I can say I played with Dave Grohl. I knew it. I'm three for three, man. Would you have a uh, Jesse? Do you have that? You got me beat. You got me beat, dude. I was always Alice in Chains over Nirvana. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, me too. But I just knew from your influence, Rob. I, I know. I know. I, I, I get it. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I guess got I'm you. picking these for me. Yeah. I, know, I love it. So, Rob, next one. Two more of the rapid fire, man. So you're you're uh you're, when you're doing back in time, we're gonna go back to the above, right when he gets going. You're actually asked to be a, a sponsor. You're gonna get sponsored by these two companies and they're gonna like sponsor you, put on the tour and all you've got to do is pretty much like, you know, showcase all of their stuff, right? So you can be sponsored and, and also be known as inventing this product, not just a sponsor, but you invented this product. So you can be known as A, the inventor of the toaster and they'll sponsor you for, for your band or B, the inventor of the George Foreman grill. A lot of grilling questions but it'll be a redone as the Rob Beckley Grill. So Toaster or Rob Beckley Grill, which one are you going with? Dang, man, that's hard. Yeah. Uh, I'm going with the George Foreman Grill. I am killing it. Jesse, what'd you have, man? Did you have that one? I had, I had the same, I had the same. Go, I'm ahead of you by one, man. So this is your chance to redeem yourself. Okay, <laughs> the last question, Rob. Um, we know, again, you've, you've definitely gone far beyond that. I know there's been new metal in the early days and rap rock, and which is great. A lot of, a lot of correlations to rap which you've done so um 2024 they're going back in the future you gotta get to do a kind of a le legacy remake of fireproof and you can bring back one of these two guest rappers to have, actually help you reimagine fireproof okay um redoing it and you get two choices you can either have tupac 
or Biggie help you re-release Fireproof and they get to do a verse? Which one are you going with? Go oh, with Tupac. Oh, I had Biggie, man. I didn't have that one. Jesse, what did you have? I got man? Pac. I got Pac. Did you really? Oh, man. Yeah, okay, we, got it. Okay. We tied it up. Yep, you did. Oh, man. So, <laughs> Jesse, uh, I guess we're, we're free on that one. You don't owe me lunch, man. So, I'll let y'all. Usually, the winner gets lunch provided by the loser, man. So, I appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> but, yeah, Rob, hopefully, interviews you've done, man. You haven't had a segment like that or a fan just give a little thing called Rapid Fire. So, thanks for being a good sport. That's pretty awesome. Love it. Love it. So, Jesse, final segment. I'll hand that back to you, man. Yeah. So, so, Rob, the last one we call the open mic session. This is your chance to go in. You want to give advice to younger musicians, anybody coming up in ministry, uh, anything you want to provide advice to that's listening to this podcast right now. Mm -hmm. This is your chance to kind of wrap. So I'm going to hand it over to you and just kind of <laughs> let you carry it here for a minute. Yeah, uh, man, I, I think the, the big thing that no matter what you do, um, I think a lot of musicians um, fall in love with the craft. They fall in love with the art. And I think you can get caught up in this in anything that you do where you, you love being an electrician, you love being whatever. Um, you can get caught up in the craft so much that you forget how to continue your platform and how to steward your platform. And that part takes a lot of work. The fun part is the writing, it's the process, it's the journey. Um, but the grind of actually getting to those next levels is such a difficult task. And um, I always encourage my my kids. Um, you're gonna you're gonna face adversity. You're gonna have hard times. Like, what do you do? It's like the the Rocky Balboa. It's like it ain't about how many times you get knocked down. It's how, it's how many times you get back up. You know, it's like you're gonna get knocked backwards. Um, I think the best advice I can tell people, no matter what you do, it's okay to it's okay to fall down, but do your best to fall forward. I'd rather fall mm -hmm. on my face and get back up running than to fall on my butt, being scared and cowering. Um, step into situations and, and take them on. Um, I, I I could probably couldn't count the number of, of kids that we met as we were out on the road that would hand us a demo or they would hand us a, you know, like, hey, a card or a, a packet about their band. Like, hey, if you ever need somebody to go on tour with you, let us know. I love the initiative and I love, we always would listen to the, to the records when we'd get back into the bus. Um, but I don't know that they really had the grit that it would take to actually get to do what they think they wanted to do. Um, mm. There's something, there's a calling, there's a passion that every one of us has. Like even this podcast that you guys are doing it, you're, you're resilient. Like Josh was resilient and reaching out, <laughs> finding a way to make it work. Um, but there's something about that. Like when you do what you love, you just keep finding a way to make it work. Um, and you fell on your face, right? Like I, I, I did. didn't respond a few times, but <laughs> would you keep going? I and, did, yes, sir. <laughs> you eventually get to where you're, where you're, you want to be. And my encouragement to anybody, no matter what you're doing, is don't be afraid to fall on your face. Mm, um, that's good. Because when you're afraid, you're going to fall on your butt and you're going to lose ground. Um, just fall on your face and claw your way back up and keep running. Man, that's awesome. And Jesse, I know that's, that's a, a parallel. Jesse, Jesse's a coach as well as I do some of the coaching on the back end, Rob, but there's such a philosophy. Jesse, you talk about failure um, is not always uh, a, a loss, right, Jesse? You say that a lot. Oh, absolutely. You know? Absolutely. I, I tell girls on our teams that, you know, this is a majority fail sport in softball. It's like you have to continue to get out there and just take your lumps and get back up and move on. That's the only way you're going to get better. Mm, yeah. That's so so powerful. And Rob, I've watched you guys over the years, man. And, and it's it's neat. To, I, I'm sure because we see on the front end, the, the amazing success and, you know, you know, dove you know, nominations, all things like that. But I'm sure you could probably spend hours talking about times when, you know, things didn't go your guys' way as a band early on the days. And uh, you took it like a champ, man. You could never tell because it's always so positive, but everybody has those stories. I remember like we were talking one time to Mikey from Islander and he said his first gig, there was like 20 people there. That, that was it. And they were on stage with them. It's like those memories of, okay, didn't make it the way we wanted to. They kept going. Now they're, you know, Grammy nominated, like you guys, right? Just you yeah. keep going and you don't give up, man. So uh, I, I yeah. love that. That's it's so simple, but so true. And I can see the, the athletic uh, correlation too, man. So, yeah. and, man. And I, even just to kind of wrap up that thought too, of everything as a musician, you 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 chase the next level, you chase the next thing. And um, ironically, I, I just can't see it, but like we have a gold record hanging on the wall back here in my office. And like that, like, that's just a thing. I could throw it in a box. Like it's cool. It's great. I was super thankful uh, for the fans that represent so much support from people. But the things that I learned on the road 
it's not the the accolades. It's not like the things that I learned that cultivated my character. Those stick with you forever. Um, and so mm-hmm. don't be afraid of those setbacks because whatever award you're chasing or whatever number one song you think is going to satisfy you, it just goes away. And somebody else is going to have another a number one song and you're going to be forgotten about. But the character development that happens during that process is what prepares you to be that next thing in life. I could tell too, Rob, because I've always, uh, yeah, and Jesse, uh, can I attest to this? I love the writing style and I've watched you, whether you go from, you know, where we go from here to, I remember when you brought out everything and there's a spot through life. You can tell you talk about seasons, right? And it's like, man, I'm I'm now correlating watching you as a young dad, like back in the day, like, again, I've watched a lot of your content. It's like, yeah. Oh, this is how you interact with people. This you have almost like you've inspired us off the mic as well. Like this is how you be a good person, a good husband, a good dad. This is how you interact with fans. So I've watched so many things you've done and how you're so graceful. Then each part is a is a learning lesson. I keep going back to that. So yeah, that's powerful. Well, Rob, man, I uh, I know you like you said you're busy. And you got a lot of things going on, man. So thank you for uh, allowing me to continue to uh, resiliently. Check, yeah. track you down man you know, appreciate that i'll take that as a compliment actually you know <laughs> so. absolutely and uh thank you guys for for what you're doing we appreciate it and thank you for the invite um and just just the opportunity to be here and and feel the the honor from you guys is much appreciated i love it man well i know you're busy we'll be in touch we'll get this out to the world soon jesse you want to say anything in closing or yeah, hey man, it was good talking to you. Um, I know you guys, uh, the, the history around here, being from Hayes and all that, we've kind of had that that knowledge, you know. And I was up there in Hayes today. My wife's from Hayes, so it's just uh, I was I was back around your old stomping grounds today. Put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Did you guys ever play any local shows, uh, local haunts in Hayes, uh, Rob? Thinking of that when you first started, was there ever a spot where you did something like that? Or I'm curious. Yeah. How? Yeah. So, in, I mean, we started there. We played a lot of different places uh, in Hayes. There used to be a, um, I don't know if it's even still there, but there was this little bar called Sip and Spin. And there was a, there. A, a laundromat on one side and there was like a club on another. And I remember playing there one night with a band from Lawrence, Kansas. Um, I think they were called Pomeroy. And we got to go play there that night uh, at Sip and Spin. I'm just thinking, like, it is crazy. We played in a church the week before, and we're playing in Sip and Spin <laughs> the next week. It's been crazy. Spreading the message, man. I love it, man. So everybody needs to hear it, man. Well, Rob, we'll get you back today, man. Thank you. We'll get this out very soon. Let's keep in touch, man. You're welcome back anytime, and just much love, and thanks for making this possible, okay? so Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Good to meet you. Yes, sir. Take care, brother. Take care. You too. So, uh, so, you know, Jesse, they always say, um, when I met you, Jesse, they're not supposed to meet our heroes, and that was great when I met you. <laughs> Meeting a musical hero like that, Jesse. <laughs> Meeting a musical hero like that, dude, is a, is a big deal, you know? What would you think of him? Wasn't he better than better than you thought? Oh, man, that, that guy was down to earth as can be. Um, very spot on with his message, you know, and and, and just inspiring, too. Um, you talk about falling down in your face. It's like, you know, aside from coaching, I'm in outside sales. It's like I do that all the time. Yeah. And just yeah. hearing somebody coming in and reiterate, you know, hey, I just walked in on a cold call. They told me to go get bent. It's like, okay, well, I got to keep doing it. So mm-hmm. <laughs> I want to put food on the table. You just got to keep on pushing. So that's that's awesome. I think that's the message of what he's trying to say is whether it's an athlete, musician, someone who works in the sales background, doctor, lawyer, just pick your, pick your genre. You have to be able to like be the grit. I keep going back to grit too. He said that a lot and falling forward. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I really, I wrote that down. I was writing down messages of what people say and like falling forward. It's kind of like, Hey, if I mess up, if I make a mistake, if I overshoot this or whatnot, what do I learn from it? You know, and that, that applies yeah. to what our, our kids do and our athletes do so often. And I'm sure the stories I would have loved to have like a B rail of all the times when they miss gigs or gigs didn't turn out right, you know, cause you see the, right. the cornerstones and the double award type stuff and the gold records. And it's so cool how they, he's, if you notice what he said, Jesse, he was less hyped about that than helping kids at a local, a local city right. thing. And, did you catch that, you know? Is, uh... Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You can tell that's where passion's at versus music. Music's just the the avenue. Yeah. It's what you uh, do it, with it. It's the means to get to help people. And you can definitely tell he's got a heart. Um, respect him for being in the military as well. Somehow I did not absolutely. know that fact. That's really cool. So, Rob, thank you and, and your family and what you're doing, Battle Creek and Pillar. All of you just, just continue to just inspire us. I'm actually about to go do a jog later, and Pillar's on my playlist of what I'm running to. So, thanks, Rob, for helping me push through that mile, man. I appreciate it, man. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, again, on behalf of Jesse and I and Dane and the staff here at Dane and Josh um, and Jesse at this point, uh, we appreciate you guys being a part of this. Um, it's a great, great day. We've got one more tonight that Dan will be back for. Uh, the nightcap, Jesse, we've got Scotland stopping by from Oklahoma State, man, tonight. So, it'd be nice. fun. 
nightcap. So, and then tomorrow, you guys are going to love this. We've got one more for the week. We've got some legendary Dorothy Taylor. She's known for her 18 million view hit by covering Disturbs Down with the Sickness. Talk about being resilient. So, um, she's stopping by tomorrow. So, it's I got a lot of good content left in the week, but um, this is a bucket list item for Jesse and I to do this. So, Rob, thank you. Thank you, Pillar. Uh, thank you, all of you listening out there. Don't forget, as always, that we love you. And as Dane would usually say, um, thank you for listening.